Okay. Shalom, brothers and sisters out there. Uh, we are recording now. Again, I would like to say all praises be to Ahaya Bahashim Yeshaya. We will have an hour class, and then after that, for this Sabbath, we'll answer any questions you would like to have. I mean, you would like to ask. All right? Now, the class we're teaching today is concerning Christ's coming. All right? Now, when it talks about his coming, dealing with a location from which the Bible says Christ will return within the earth. And it's going to give you full understanding of why uh, these wars in the earth under the UN, under the Western world, under Rome, have been ramped up. You're going to find it have nothing to do with the political arguments that you see within the earth today. It have everything to do with Bible prophecy, knowing that Christ will return. Therefore, the Western world armies are tricking the other armies that they're in battle with to ramp up, to be prepared for a war outside of the war they originally prepared for. Now, I would like this, I like to say this crystal clear. We're going to come straight out of the Bible and the Apocrypha today concerning Christ's coming. You're going to find out that this plan was hatched under what they call the New World Order a long time ago. Now, hatched by who? Now, this has have become a, uh, a popular word all in the earth today. When we say, or when you hear the word Illuminati, but really, when you hear the word Illuminati, that word is a diversion also. And they have put Illuminati on people that have nothing to do with the plan concerning the war against Christ. The mm -hmm. Illuminati is not Jay-Z. It's not Beyonce. It's not musicians that's throwing up the Baphomet. Mm -hmm. That's just a diversion. They wanted you to all run down and, and deal with while, they, while, while the real Illuminati plans. Now, when I say the real Illuminati, I'm talking about the powers under Satan that's over world governments that have a detailed handbook on what they would call the United One World Order under Satan. Now, someone may ask out there, well, why would George Bush, why the politicians of the earth, what reason is for them to desire a one world order? What is it really about? What is the plan? You're going to find out that the one world order is not about a utopia of all nations operating together. The order, according to prophecy and scripture, is to prepare the whole earth to band together and fight against something coming out of the sky. Now, let's make this clear. This has nothing to do with planet X, planet risk, or all the other diversions that they have been given the world. Okay? That's also a plan of diversion. And you're going to find out the majority of things we've learned in modern day theologian and through secular programming with media is actually the diversion. What should we be, we be looking at? And where should we be looking is actually within Scripture. You're going to find today the Masons, the powers that be, and I'm not talking about the low-level Masons, which is looking to be firemen or just be community servants and working at Salvation Army. I'm not speaking of these particular people, the philanthropists. I'm talking about high-level Masons who have the blueprint from the past, know exactly what to do, what are they planning against, what people they're planning against, and they have prior history that they have put together to prepare for the impending war. Now, what battle I'm talking about? I'm talking about the, the battle of Armageddon, the celestial against the terrestrial. I'm talking about realm against realms, kingdom against kingdoms. I'm speaking of an impending battle in which the whole earth will fight against the coming of our Lord and Savior. The greatest deception they have used is to infiltrate the Christian churches, 
So the Christian churches would be so diverted and so diluted from the gospel of Christ, they would have no idea that they are a part of the Illuminati conspiracy. They would just focus on certain contents of the scripture without understanding prophecy. All right. So this is also a calling to those who believe in the Bible, Christians also. You look at this. Look at this lesson if the Most High allow it to fall on you. Open up your Bible. Open up your Apocrypha and your history and your mind and follow us this Sabbath to understand that the Masons are preparing not only for Christ to come to this earth. They understand that there's a geographical lo location in which he will enter the earth. And they have prepared all the wars in the earth and all the armies of the earth in a certain location, knowing where Christ will appear. Now, of course, no man know the day or the hour. But it's not that you should be ignorant of the time. So let's go. We will start speaking of the coming of Christ. We will start in your apocrypha. We're going to second Ezra in your apocrypha. Now someone passed me the King James Bible I have over there so they'll know. It's in the cabinet there. So brothers and sisters out there will know beyond any shadow of a doubt that the Apocrypha belongs in the Bible. Now, of course, a lot of you that are in this class today, you already realize this, you know this. But I have to show this because every time our videos are shown worldwide all around the earth, someone who did not fall on this information learned something. So I must, if I'm going to go into the Apocrypha, I must show that it's validity. I must show it's validity. Why? If I pull out a little red book that Christians and others out there never seen before, they will, they will start claiming that I'm reading something outside of the Bible and use that as a shield not to receive the information. To tell you the truth, if you don't have the Apocrypha, you really can't put together the prophecies concerning Christ's coming. Why? Because his coming was in the complete King James Version Bible 1611. I so happen to have one in front of me. A complete 1611 King James Version Bible. All right. I'm going to show this and I'm going to jump after that, jump right into it. Within this, right in the middle, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, in your King James 1611, you'll find what? The Apocrypha. Okay? Which is your book of Ezra, a, con a continuation of the prophet Ezra in the Old Testament of the Bible. All right? Now, to show you, I'm just reading this one. But it was a part of the original 1611, which got Genesis through Revelation, and in the middle, the Apocrypha. So it is valid. Now, for some of you out there who may go to your pastor, and you may ask them, well, why haven't my pastor ever told me about this book, or ever tell me that this book existed? They'll claim that the Apocrypha is not spiritually inspired, and have no lessons or teachings concerning the coming of Christ. This lesson alone will totally tear down that lie they've been teaching through Western world theologian. Because why? I'm going to read of the coming of Christ and his location of coming out of the Apocrypha. Okay? So don't expect to get the answers if you go to one of your religious leaders or pastors concerning the book. They'll say, yeah, we heard about it, but it's heretical and you shouldn't read it. Well, they're telling you this not because they've read it themselves and seen it to be false. They're taught that in the theologian seminary schools. You can only teach the sleep doctrine of Western world pagan Christianity amongst the plubs or the poor. That's why they don't want you to read it. All right. So we're going to start off by reading the Apocrypha concerning the coming of Christ. 
Now, what are we showing you here? We're showing you that according to prophecy, the powers that be know that the Most High is real. They know that Christ is real. And they have set up the new world order in preparation for war against the coming Messiah. And through this, have set up many diversions to have you look at other things that's not even prophecy while they prepare to fight our Savior. Okay? Now, let's go to 2 Edwards, the 13th chapter. And let's start at the first verse. Now, we, when you go into the 13th chapter, it speaks of the coming of Christ. Just giving you a synopsis here. The chapter before that, the 12th chapter, it actually breaks down the 12 eagles or the 12 Caesars of Rome. Now, why? Because we know that the Roman Empire is the empire of Satan. It's Satan's kingdom. That's the kingdom that martyred or killed Christ. That's the kingdom that was against the disciples. That was the kingdom that was set up in 70 AD and destroyed our people before we ran into Africa. They are Satan's hub or army. Okay? It's their plan under the Illuminati to destroy God's people and fight against Christ. So first in Ezra's the 12th chapter, it breaks down the 12 eagles, which are the 12 Caesars under Rome. These are they with their satanic agenda or the Illuminati agenda. But let's go into the coming of Christ. Second Edris, the 13th chapter, starting with the first verse. Uh, second Edris, chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed the dream. Uh, it says, and it came to pass. After mm -hmm. Sorry. Pass me that. So I have everything in place. I don't want it. you to grab it later. Thank you. Let's go. It says, and it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed the dream by night. I dreamed the dream by night. Now, you're going to find that these visions are similar to the visions of Daniel and the visions of John the Revelator. Read. Uh, verse 2. In lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. Verse 3. And I beheld in lo, that a man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. All the things trembled that were seen under him. Now it talks about a man coming with thousands of angels. Right? Read that last part again. Verse 3. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. With the thousands of heaven. Now let's get a precept to show them that it's speaking of Christ returning with the heavenly angels. Let's get Daniel 7. You have it? Mm hmm Let's get Daniel 7, and I need you to get the book of Jude, where it tell you he's coming to judge. Read Jude first. Uh, Jude, uh, verse 14. Now I'm going here as further validity that the Apocrypha speaks of Christ. So that destroys any concept that preachers out there are teaching that the Bible or the Apocrypha, which is part of the Bible, don't have spiritual significance. Read. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying. Saying what? Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Hold up. The Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. To execute judgment upon all. To execute judgment upon all. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So Christ is coming back with the thousands of angels for what? Judgment. See that? Now let's get the one in the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. Uh, Daniel chapter seven. You can start at nine. Uh, verse nine. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of